First of all, just explain for us what happened to you, that this was back in 2022. Uh, yeah, it was uh, May Bank Holiday Monday. Uh, my wife and I were walking down the street in broad daylight. Uh, two men approached us on a moped. Uh, the person in the back of the moped jumped off, pulled out um, an 18-inch matte black machete, uh, pushed it up to my face, screamed that he wanted my watch. Um, fortunately, I got the watch off quickly. I gave it to him uh, and they sped off. Uh, the police were on the scene within about two minutes, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, and they managed to piece together the CCTV after the event, and they caught uh, the two individuals that had mugged us. Unfortunately, they had mugged seven people in 10 days. Uh, they took one person's eye out. They took one person's elbow off. Um, between them, they got 35-year prison sentences, uh, 22 years minimum custody because they were deemed to be um, dangerous. So uh, pretty frightening stuff. And what did you think when you saw the machete that they had? And can you describe it for us? Because if, if, if you see pictures of these, I mean, people say words like zombie knives and the rest, but it, they are quite shockingly big. Yeah, I mean, so this was a sort of 18-inch matte black um, machete with a with a shiny silver edge. Uh, part, part of the reason for that is twofold. One, it's intimidating. People are more likely to comply. But also people tend to focus on the knife itself and that um, takes away from focusing on the perpetrator. Mm. So often you're less likely uh, to be able to identify the perpetrator after the event because you've been focusing on the knife. The, the key problem with these sort of knives, in my experience, is the consequences when they're used. Um, with a flick of a, of a machete, you can, for example, which happened to one of the other victims, take someone's elbow off, you can take someone's hand off, you can kill somebody. Mm heat of the moment whether that's you know during a mugging like mine um whether in some instances in gangs their self-defense people are in the heat of the moment they get angry they get scared they lash out and if you if you lash out with a machete you are likely to kill somebody or or take off a limb in a way that you know obviously with some other weapons uh, that might not be be the case so to the law then obviously what happened to you someone threatening you with with a knife as they did already illegal but the changes that are afoot include um machetes and zombie knives being being banned outright even if you just own them one and, and you have them at home sellers can face up to two years in jail under these changes and also there'll be a new criminal offense of possessing a bladed weapon with intent to endanger life or, or intimidate what do you make of, of those plans and do you think they go far enough um, I'm delighted to see these come in. After my attack, I uh, went onto Amazon, I typed in machete, and I was saddened to see that not only could you buy the Dragon Slayer 18-inch matte black machete, but they'd also try to sell you a balaclava at the same time, you know, under their algorithms. Um, these laws, I think, are, are a brilliant way of tackling the problem. As you've identified, there's four elements. First, they've expanded the definition of the weapons that fall within this. So now we've got machetes, we've got more zombie knives. It used to be that only if there was writing on the blade that it would be included. Now it's a whole suite of um, those. So we've broadened those that can be included. Um, the power to seize on private property is really important, like you've mentioned. Previously, that could only happen if it had been used in an offence and was going to constitute evidence. Now, um, if the police believe it could be used for crime, that can be seized. Third, they've increased the maximum penalty, so there's going to be more deterrence for those that are in possession of these weapons. And then fourth, they've introduced a, a new crime which replicates the firearms position. So now if you've got an intention to endanger mm. life or cause fear of violence, the maximum sentence jumps up to 10 years um, from two years from your possession. And, so, And um, yet, do you think this gets to the root cause of the problem, though? Because we know from, from young people who carry knives that they still value the protection of having a knife as they see it more than they fear what could happen if they're caught with it. And I guess until you break that dynamic, people are still going to carry knives, even if there are scary prison sentences facing them if they're caught. Uh, of course, I mean, it's a classic chicken and egg scenario. Mm. Uh, the first example I would give is Dunblane. Mass shooting, massive crackdown on firearms. Fortunately, we don't have mass shootings in the UK anymore the way they do, for example, in the US. Second, it's a chicken and egg because you only want to carry a knife because you think somebody else is carrying a knife. If nobody's carrying knives, you don't need to carry a knife. And so we've got to get to that. But I think one of the key aspects of this is that it's going to be able to cr uh, crack down on the supply of these knives. As I mentioned earlier, when I went online and found that I could buy a machete from Amazon and have it delivered to my house the next day, that's got to stop. 
Now, I'm, I don't think it's necessarily overnight going to stop the proliferation of these weapons, but they become harder to get, mm. and then they're less in circulation, and then people feel less of a need to carry them for protection. So I think it's a great first step in the right yeah. direction.